Peace, family. <clears throat> so, uh, today's video is going to be building on, uh, the earth and air is a view. The fire and water is a view. The heaven and hell is a view. Like, what is that? What is that heaven? It's a place of mind. <laughs> Where your mind's eye dwells. Alright, I got the little GPS in my car now. Well, I've always had GPS in my car. I just never used it. So, I'm stupid official now. Share it to a few more groups. People be a little sensitive about me doing these videos while I'm driving. I get it. I'm going to kind of set a rule where uh, while I'm driving, I won't be answering nobody's questions. I'll just be talking. Maybe I'll make people feel better. Like I do this shit for y'all. <laughs> People be yo, I was going through my video, I saw them angry faces. I was like, why are you so angry? I inboxed. I was like, why are you so angry? She was like, because you drive while you're doing these videos. You don't care about pedestrians, you don't care about life, you don't value life. Can you stop projecting your fears on me? Can you stop projecting your anger on me? I don't even think prop people process. I swear. But uh she had some realm of truth. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be uh, answering nobody's questions while I'm driving. Because, like, you can talk shit because you're like, you do videos. You do your videos while you're driving. Bitch, do you not recite music while you're driving? Do you not talk to people in your car while you're driving? Are you not looking at another screen right now? This is my GPS while I'm on the phone. Even I'll be talking on the phone right now. Like, my point is we multitask. So don't put your fears on me. But anyway, today's video. Heaven and hell. Air. Earth. Fire. Water. Alright. So. In order for you to grasp heaven and hell. First you need to grasp the singularity. That would house or be in the middle of both of them. So if you look at heaven as like above and hell below, earth would be the singularity, would kind of be like uh, the system that houses both heaven and hell. Now, what do you mean with that? How is earth the system that houses both heaven and hell? Are y'all serious? Like, come on. Like, angels are aspects of heaven, if you believe in angels, and they are angels here on our planet. And then there are like demons on this planet and those demons are constructs or resonate with hell so you kind of have demons and angels in a singularity you call that earth okay but what are we talking about we're talking about the body your body your rules earth is your body and you are ruling earth but the way that you've set certain rules on earth have put uh, restrictions on the body you have countries. Those are restrictions on the body. It's an earthly body where it's all terrain. Why are we segregating the terrain in countries? Once again, it's all the body. Hey, let's do that again. It's all the body. Why are we separating it in terrains? You call that a crown, third eye, throat chakra, heart chakra, solar plex, sacral chakra, root chakra. Why are we dividing ourselves up in these countries into these... Uh, sovereignties when it's all adjacent or associated to the body it's the singularity the body is the singularity that's housing heaven and hell now if you look at the uh, construct of uh, an angel and a demon in the way that they've been depicted well you have an angel and an angel's never trying to develop its own ideology its own principles now you're saying the demon works on behalf of the devil the devil ain't never told these demons 
what rules or what what system they have to do. The devil kind of allows them to to be themselves, to be demons. If you're a demon, be a demon. And the devil lets the demons be the demons. God kind of puts the tears. Okay, you're an angel of uh, sound. You're an angel of light. You know, tears into the angels. So they don't really have an ability to develop their own thoughts so deep. So if you look at this as say God would be you as the body. All right. Just so you can process. This would be God, the body. And then heaven and hell dwells within the system of God. So then God would have a system of heaven, which would be your thoughts. Now, your thoughts are not really developing you all the way. They're kind of giving you the rules of another God. So what do I mean with that? Okay. Um, a billboard. And it says, eat fresh for less, $5 foot longs. All right. That's a thought. That's coming from another body, a God, another body. And they're projecting that thought onto you. Now it's up to you if you allow that thought to be developed into your system. And if this system then becomes developed in you, you're kind of tapping into a different frequency or a different polarity. But let me not run on a tangent with that because that might be a little difficult to understand right now. What I'm trying to explain is that heaven is like a realm of thought. And the thought, in essence, would resonate with what you would call your higher self. Now, your higher self is also like a future self, meaning that the future self has already went through the development. This is a... All right. Because um, there's no text to kind of like confirm what I'm saying. So I don't like saying certain things and people are like, he just talked. But uh, an angel represents an ascended being. In order to have... Uh, ascension or an identity because let's just say that um, demons don't really have identities they do but they keep them hidden so you would never really know the true identity of a demon or a devil or a developer no different than you don't really know the true identity of those that have developed your world so uh, you think that uh, Bill Gates is the only mind behind Microsoft hell no there was other people in that garage. There was other people that was developing this system. But you don't hear about the other people that helped develop Microsoft. You have the identity. You have the angel. You have the most high of that Microsoft, which would be Bill Gates. And that's what gets honored. That's what gets uh, praised. That's what gets the identity. So, identity comes from experience. Did you ever grasp how angels have identities? How do, how do you become the angel of light? You have to take on the identity of being a light bearer. That takes an experience. The experience comes in the development. You kind of have to develop that experience. So then this is where you get the angels battling with the devil. Or in essence, identity battling with development. Because this is the problem that we have. You have your identity. But you're trying to develop the real you and not the false identity of you or the false heaven of you or the false Eden of you or the false garden of you. You don't want, this is what Lilith did. Lilith was like, uh, I don't want the false system. How can I be free if I'm not free to decide how I want to be slept with? I'm just trying to gra help y'all grasp an idea. This is, so then she developed, she went to the devil development she went to the development system and developed a new identity you call her a whore you call her a vampire whatever this is the system that is needed to enter into a new identity so basically this is my point in order for you to even be a god okay to be a god you have to first take on an identity and then that identity kind of gets shattered now, I explained this in previous videos. How do you get a God in motion? Well, once the God realizes that something's off, it kind of gets in a trek, kind of gets in motion. 
So how do you get an identity in motion? In motion? Well, you have to shatter the paradigm of that identity. So for example, if you think that you're a boss and you're so egotistical out here, like certain angels represent that ego, that high status, that white cloths don't fucking touch me when you kind of resonate with that polarity you take on that identity until your ass gets shifted until the devil comes contest that identity now of course you're going to be mad at the devil of course you're going to be angry at the devil because the devil or development don't use the word devil use it as a system don't put the devil as one individual person with a pitchfork that's sitting around here trying to fuck your whole life up just like you can't put angel to one being process this as heaven is identity and hell is development and in heaven you are so happy in your identity i'm a boss i got a million dollar car i got a million dollar house i'm in heaven i'm in heaven life is fucking great and then you realized you didn't give yourself that identity. Maybe your dad developed that identity for you. And this was just passed down to you. Starts fucking with you. Maybe the identity is cool, but your identity is only second. Because identities are associated to egos. Well, I'm a king. Well, shit, I'm a president. Well, I'm an alien. You know, get all these different identities. And I'm like, oh, hell no. What do you do when you have all these identities? You kind of have identity crisis. Because you got to look at this. You got to look at this. We're a simulation. And we're simulating. We are the simulation that's a part of. We are. We are. We are the simulation that is a part of a being that is simulating. So the being that is simulating is in an identity crisis right now. Because we don't know who the fuck we are. There's about 15 billion identities. About 15 billion angels <laughs> sitting here trying to serve you. 15 different hats. 15 different yous trying to serve you can you figure it out if not the devil is going to come in and develop a different system and this is where you know uh god was like uh lucifer i'm gonna put you inside this body and he's like mm, fuck i ain't going in that shit and he's like yes you are so god went to the devil's like well i well i get to like prove if this vessel is even worthy of you so it's going to constantly develop a new identity it's going to constantly develop a new you and of course, that's going to anger you. That's the devil. Y'all don't even know what the fuck a devil is. The devil does not exist. It's development. And it is you that is creating a development against you because you are so torn or so adjacent to you being this, this identity. And then, you know, stop putting your eggs in one basket. You got to understand, you can't hold on to none of this. When you die, all this is gone. You kind of hold on to the memories, and the memories is what's giving you all this anyway. So if it's a memory, the memories last forever if you want them to, or you can lose them, forget them, whatever, die. My, my, my point is, it is the memories that will allow you to access anything that you choose to access. But you don't develop memories, you don't have experiences, because you get stuck in identities, or stuck in identity Stuck in identities. Therefore, you're the same motherfucker for 50 billion years. 50 years, 50,000 50, 50, 50, years. You're like the same motherfucker. Until, until the devil gets you or development gets you. Now, the devil could look ugly. If you, if you so, like, listen, you as a parent, this is a simulation simulating you. You a parent. You up here so scared about your child leaving the house every day. Worried, fear, projection, all this fear. Now, remember, your identity is a mother. And the way that you are processing your identity is in fear. And that's not worthy of heaven or God. So then the, develop, the devil has to come in and kind of develop an alternate version of that. And the devil or development does not take sides. It's not really looking at it like, oh, okay, well, she's a mom. So because she's a mom, I'm not going to develop a new identity on her. It's not looking at it like that. It's looking at it like, like chick. Like you are restricting your whole existence, your whole, your whole, your whole gift of life right now is 30 years of worry of, oh my God, my children, are they good? Oh my God, my husband, oh my God, me. So, you know, you do that long enough, the devil's going to come in and kind of give you a different uh, identity. For example, if you're a mother and you live in a life of fear, constantly worrying about your goddamn kids, well, you might project that out and something might happen to your kids. Now you're no longer a mother anymore. 
Your kids is gone. Something has happened. And you call that the devil. Or is that you? Adverse, ad, 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 adversary. You know, adverse. But, uh, you know, I just kind of want y'all to grasp. Like, you know, I might seem a little aggravated or frustrated. It's like passion. But, like, this ain't, this ain't no, no, this is you. These are, these are spirits that are, okay, I use this example. All this is happening inside you. And this is facts. This is all facts. All this is happening inside you. What the inside does, inside out. I think there's a movie about that. So, what the inside does is it projects out. So, inside projecting out. I'm about to show you, all right? Inside. I got love. That's inside. That's a feeling. That's a feeling that I have inside. You could say it's in my heart chakra. I guess when you put things in categories or lanes, you could say it would be in my heart chakra. I got love in all of me. I don't have to restrict it to points. But, okay, I got love, okay? So how am I projecting this love outside of me? Well, you could call these clothes and shit, but let me just be simple. How am I projecting my love outside? If I got a woman and I got love for her, how am I projecting the feelings I have inside of me out? I might go buy her some roses. So what I'm trying to tell you is that spirits, because this is an emotion. Love is an emotion. Spirits have emotions. Your love is only, I'm 32 years old. It's only 32 years worth of love. I got a little more love than 32 years worth of love in me. I can feel that. So my point is just spirits kind of give you their emotions as well. Spirits are kind of projecting their identities on you as well. Little Cupid's arrow. So because these are spirits trying to project themselves out or tap its quantum entanglement. It's a way that these spirits can entangle themselves into your quantum realm. And they are projecting themselves out through things. Roses, these clothes, this car. I want to travel. That is an internal emotion. So I have to then allow that internal spirit to project itself out. And now I'm driving a goddamn Kia Soul. Dodge Ram. Bentley. Look at these logos, these symbols. You could then understand what spirit is associated with it. Why do you think they got so many wings on cars? So many wings. Remember, see, I'm trying to help y'all process and, and, and make sense. Okay? Heaven re represents identity. Well, what helps you with your identity, your car? How are you a boss if you can't get to work? How are you a mom if you can't go to the grocery store and get your kids food? So, you put or associate your car to your identity. It gets you in motion. It gives you wings. I probably would have been home if I used my GPS, but we, we cool. It's cool. Now, development is a very real thing. Because, uh, look, see, see it, look, I came a lot. Thank you, Lisa, but please stop projecting your fears on me. This is a distracted driver. You're distracted in life, not just when you're moving forward in a car. Work on not being distracted. And maybe you won't have to worry about uh, the distractions of others. I wish you wasn't distracted from this conversation and actually listen to what the fuck I was saying. That would probably help your life out. But you are kind of a devil right now trying to develop you know, a different system to my identity. And my identity is a safe vessel inside my car as I'm going home. That's my identity. That's how I perceive myself right now. As a safe individual in my car, safe until I get home safe, <laughs> safe. <laughs> There's no other projections outside of safe, except what you kind of giving me. I'm like, damn, you supposed to, I promise you, you look in the mirror, you like, I'm the most spiritual, godly person in the world. Then stop fucking trying to develop me. Please, worry about you. 
worry about the distractions you put in life because you just distracted me. Literally. I haven't read one fucking comment on this screen, and I said I wasn't, until you come with a distracting comment. It literally, it's literally facts. Everything I say is facts because it always manifests itself out. So, uh, keep going. So, uh, heaven is often, um, associated with sound. You get a lot of choirs and singings. Because, uh, I did a, I did a post and I said, um, Catholics focus on the Ka, which would be the spirit. While Baptists focus on the Ba, which would be the body. So, um, I guess you get, a you get two different sounds. So I guess they both would be associated with sound, but one sound controls the fluid, controls the, um, the chi. Well, chi will kind of be both, but let's just say this, the, the fluid, the fluids in you. So. Catholic churches, Latin, Latin stuff, all these, all these uh, vibrational tones and stuff. Well, there's been uh, a lot of studies, and they're both emotional. Church can be an emotional experience, but there's people who go to church, like Catholic church, and they cry. You know, and it's not like they caught the Holy Spirit or like they got emotional, like in the Baptist churches. They got emotional based on the situation or the environment that they're in. They got emotional. And it's because it tapped into their spirit. It didn't really move their body. You don't have a lot of motion in Catholic churches, but you have a lot of spiritual movement. You know, bells, ding, candles, incense. All these things are connected to the spirit. It's not really associated wholeheartedly to the body. It's more to the spirit. So, yeah, Mercury's Kaaba, you know, or the memory of the Ka and the Ba, which is really what Merkaba is, the, the memory of the, the Ka and the Ba. But, uh, so I explain that because Catholics or, uh, you know, holy Ka's or holy spirits or holy cats or holistic cats or whole cats, um, they kind of focus on the spirit, which would be the dead. And you know that they focus on the spirit or the dead because they have something called catacombs. And catacombs, which is still associated to Catholics, are where they place the dead. Spirits. So Catholics deal with the dead, deal with spirits. And they play certain sounds that are dealing with or associating with the spirits. So heaven itself are dealing with with the dead spirits. Where does the dead go when they die? Back in a body. Now, I explain that some of your thoughts aren't your own. That they are actually the spirits that reside in the lower realms of you that have projected themselves out as billboards and then your mind is reading that billboard and now placing that thought inside your brain. Once again, kind of like spirits traveling through the body. How do you get hell to heaven? How do you get heaven to hell? So, uh, I don't know. I, I low key feel bad for y'all. I ain't gonna lie, I do. But I felt bad for myself for a while. Cause I didn't really like, I didn't understand. And it was like, and it was because the society we had really makes it very difficult. Very difficult. Like, uh, I remember reading somebody's post and she wrote like a long paragraph. It was like this big. And she was saying all these different words. Da -da 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 -da. And then I was like, I don't understand none of this. Now I do, but I don't. So I was like, you know, if I was like a five or six year old, I wouldn't be able to grasp a word she fucking said. I just wouldn't. And like a word she said was like spiritual armor. I said, what the fuck is spiritual armor? What it? What is spiritual armor? Want me to tell you what spiritual armor is? Want me to tell you? Don't look. Ratchet Q is here sometimes. 
So just process. Do you know what spiritual armor is? I'm, you know what? I'm going to give a 30 minute, <laughs> I'm going to give a 30 minute free regression if someone can really truly give me a definition of spiritual armor and make sure that shit makes sense. Like, make sure if I was a six or seven year old, I would understand what you're talking about. Because I, I have sessions with six and seven year olds. I teach kids all the time. All the time. I just don't go live and show you the stuff I do outside my life. Maybe I should so y'all can really see I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. But, uh, anyone want to try to answer that question? Spiritual armor. And I'm so ratchet. I'm so sorry. Because when I thought of that, I was like, I know what, I know what spiritual armor is. <laughs> Holy translate meaning oath. All right. I'm going to just help you out. So when I read spiritual armor, because I guess she was saying like, I don't, I don't know. You know, I be having videos that talk all kinds of shit. So she was just responding to something I said. And then people be like, respond to the shit I said like I remember what the fuck I said I the hell y'all act like these are written speeches y'all act like I'm taking this like and I'm closing everything off on a Saturday night writing a three hour lecture to come on here Sunday morning I do this from point A to point B this is what I do this is life support in the life but spiritual armor okay protection protection of what Okay, spirits, protection. So that's not good enough. That's not enough to get a free regression. Protection of what? So you're saying protection of spirits. How do you protect yourself against spirits? Where do spirits travel on? <laughs> Yo, y'all ready? I'm gonna tell y'all. Want me to tell y'all what spiritual protection is? Or uh, a spiritual uh, armor? <laughs> <laughs> a spiritual armor would be a condom. Facts. Big facts. Let me say that again. A spiritual armor would be a condom because it is shielding you or protecting you from the spirit, which is the sperm, which is uh, how all of us kind of got here right now. So when she said that, I said, does she even understand what she's saying? Cause like all this shit, cause I know, I get what she's saying. And I'm just like, does she even know that that's what she's talking about? Protect yourself with spiritual armor. That's a goddamn condom. Now that made sense. That made sense. What? Spiritual armor. <laughs> They want to tell me about my goddamn driver. How much, how much spirit, how much spiritual armor you need, white lady, to, to ask me about my goddamn driver? How much spiritual, how much spiritual armor do you need? Maybe you don't need it. There's a, there's a purpose to uh, get y'all off of y'all um, seven day cycles. You're supposed to bleed for seven days. I think y'all just be out here playing. Y'all don't really want this information. That's why I be like, just go to my old videos. Y'all really want to hear some real shit? Just go to the old ones. Because, like, when I had, like, three people watching, I felt like I could really, like, say it all. Now I feel like, because I'm only as good as the energy I receive. Three people was worth it. They was receiving. They was here for it. 23 people watching now Y'all got about 5 of y'all that just here to talk shit The other 10, 15 of y'all Actually have been a part of this journey And I love and respect y'all And then the rest of y'all are kind of like Like agents Y'all don't even know why y'all here Y'all don't even know why y'all spirit <laughs> Projected you to this point in time Just know a lot of things Like to keep a lot of eyes on me Pretty open book though It ain't too hard for you to find me I, 
I can't. All y'all bleed for about three days. They fuck. They messed y'all whole cycle up. Y'all whole cycle up. I'm not a female. I'm not gonna talk about y'all body. Makes a lot of uh, makes a lot of females mad that I kind of have a, a certain level of awareness of you, and I and I have balls. Kind of pisses things off. Hey Q, watching you from South Africa. I get a lot of love in South Africa. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. I know y'all support me. I support y'all. That's why I do these videos. I can stay quiet. Like, I don't think people... Like, my life is not just metaphysical. <laughs> well, no, my life is metaphysical. But my life isn't just spiritual work. I was in a studio yesterday with Rihanna's producer. Like, grasp. Life is interesting for me. This isn't just it. I'm here because I truly, truly value getting out simple information. It's important. Plus, I kind of have to put certain pieces of myself back together again. I don't think people process the Big Bang was the explosion of a being. Of a being. And that being was broken up in pieces. You hear the story, Osiris. You hear the story, Pataz. You hear the story, um, Numos, where they were kind of like broken up into pieces. And then it took a feminine presence or energy to kind of put them back together again. But she didn't have access to the phallus, Ugh, meaning the sperm. <sighs> So then it took another being. And then this is where you get your Obatalized Odins. Yeah, the seven chakras is a deep thing, man. The seven chakras resonate with the seven days of the menstrual. But when uh, the planets kind of got disturbed, it kind of disturbed your uh, cycle as well. Remember, planets go through cycles. No different than you, planet. And once the uh, planets were disrupted or distorted, it kind of disrupted you as well. Man, I really got concern for that lady, yo. I really do, really do. I really do. Like, because here's my thing. If you really feel that way, hold it. Like, I, all right. So, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time and a place for everything. Okay? If I'm going through something you deem tragic, because I want y'all to process. If I'm going through something y'all deem tragic, so you deem me driving, tragic. It's tragic. If you see me going through something tra tragic, how you approach the situation is key. If you see a mother holding her dead child in her arms and she's going through something tragic, do you go up to that mother and say, well, you know, you should have just been watching him. If you would have just been outside when he was playing in the street, then he would have never got hit. How fucking receptive do you think that mother's going to be? That mother's probably gonna wanna kill you and put you in the other arm. Like, for real, how receptive is that person going to be? So, if you would've thought about it, you know what, excuse me, love, let me take you to go get some tea. Let me come come, come into, you know, Starbucks. Let me sit you down, let me calm you down. Let me get you some chocolate, something. Feel me, a better approach. Maybe I will listen to you. But we go so aggressive. You are distract. You are distract. Whoa. 
Whoa, guys. Whoa, girls. Can we try to have some empathy in life? Can we try to figure out what the other person is experiencing right now? Not just ourselves. Because I know you're mad that I'm driving and you're not. And I'm doing lives and I'm actually benefiting from this information while you're not. That's why you're on my platform. Like, I get it. I get it. I just really want, like, us to do better in life. Because what she said is right. It is. It is dangerous. But so is the city I grew up in. So is America. So is Donald motherfucking Trump. I get it. And that's all I... And because I'm genuine, I'm not perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. LaCrista said, uh, you're a very genuine person. Thank you for all you do. And in my genuineness, I'm not perfect. I'm a diamond in a rough. Have y'all not seen Aladdin? I did. That was an incredible movie. But I am literally a diamond in the rough. Meaning that I still have all this soot, this dirt, this pressure, this earth. This external body. I still have this external body inside this soul you call Q. Be patient with me. I'm 32 years old. And I've been doing this for a year. Five years ago, this was not me. Three years ago, this was not me. So be patient. If that's how you feel, maybe inbox me that. Maybe send me like a little rose. Love, I love everything that you do. It would probably just be smart for you maybe not to look at your messages while you're driving. Maybe focus on the road and just talk while you go live. Maybe that would be a better way of approaching something. But now I'm kind of talking to the devils in y'all. All these little devils out here. Constantly trying to develop a system in force. And not will. Can you kind of allow me to will some of the emotions that you are feeling into existence? If not, I can force some of these emotions into existence. And then I guess the emotions are going to be associated with force. Hmm. I guess that's the world we want to live in, right? Because you do that shit to your kids, don't you? You do that shit to your parents, don't you? I can tell the way she operates her life with the way she came at me. In force. So I feel bad for her nigga, her man, her children. Because now I can see how she operates. In force. She's an enforcer. Chill. I'm home. Ain't nobody get hit. We good. Appreciate the concern, though. I'm about to be home. Hebrew word, E-T-S-E-V, definition. I don't even know what that is. But, uh, I'm about to be home, and I'm gonna go through y'all comments. Parked. This is what I pull up to. Hold on. Do you see my dogs and my sister? <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny as hell. Oh, man. You know. You know. <laughs> no lobby. Make sure I don't hit my puppies. Oh, God. That's funny. She's so country. Can my country ask you? All right. <clears throat> oh, wow. They won't even let me go. They won't even let me see y'all comments. I'm sorry. Look. The only comment I see is, you should do that one. I only breathe for three days. I'll do a video talking about the periods. I kind of be doing it like when I just feel like it because I still like I know I got to do the video. It's a couple of videos y'all asked for. So I'm going to get them. My bad. I feel you, bro. I support you. I'm new. Don't know why my spirit brought me here. If you're mad. So I will send love and light and blessings to you. Oh, what?
you don't exist to me. You are a digital imprint. I will never get mad at anything that's digital. I don't. You could be a digital being. You could be... You're not real. You're a digital imprint. You're real to you. I'm not real to you. Just process. I would never let anything anger me that's not real. Now, am I passionate about you fixing your own problems? Definitely. Am I passionate about you being able to communicate yourself in a way that doesn't upset individuals outside of me? Because I'm... I'm not real. So I'm just a simulation simulating you. So I want you to work on your approach addressing people. It has nothing to do with me at all. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> God free legal will test or term inheriting eternal life. God definition. Okay, well, you know, we're going to leave all these uh, definitions and comments for anyone that views these videos at a later time. I'm about to just conclude the video now. Heaven is your mental. So when you process the word heaven, put this statement behind it. Heaven is a simulation that's simulating you. That's your mind. That's heaven. Simulation simulating you. Then you have hell. This is your body, your rules. So you have to process what might be ruling your body or how you are defining the rules to your body. I explain, got $100 in your bank account. I say, let's go get filet mignon tonight for dinner. That's positive. Eating is positive in your mind. Just, just grasp, you know. That's an action that represents positivity. So one positive, one, here we go, positive, all right? Come eat. You respond, I can't afford it. I won't be able to go. I didn't make any money this week. First off, this is a simulation simulating you. So why the hell do you think you're going to have a positive outcome in life if I'm giving you one positive to your three negatives? Can't, won't, don't. How? How is can't, won't, don't going to be weaker than the one little let's go eat? It don't work like that. <laughs> this is a simulation simulating you. This is your body, your rules. The rules you just say on your body is can't, won't, and don't. How many times you say can't, won't, and don't? You can't drive like that, Quentin. Don't hit a pedestrian. You won't be doing or, or shouldn't, shouldn't be doing lives while driving. Not be safe, brother. You know, you're going to get home safe. Something positive. At least, at least, at least balance the motherfucker. Like, okay, I'm praying for you. You get safe, safe ride. You're being reckless, but I'm going to hope and that you're safe. I'm something like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Like, whoa. So, simulation, simulating you. That's your heaven. Your body, your rules. That's your hell. Maybe you can rule your heaven into hell. And maybe you can stop simulating such a hellish world for you. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Your carbon chemical flesh illustration. Hell translate meaning Edith. Different in perspective. I think y'all smarter than me. I be trying to figure out why I just do this. Like, y'all should be doing this. We could be going lives. I didn't even tell y'all what I actually have. All right, I'm going to just give y'all one little insight, and I'm going to end it. So I've always saw myself helping <clears throat> in the future. And I like that. Right, you're real to me because you're real. Try to be as real as possible. Um. So... I explained that I'm going to be assisting in the future in certain ways. So I have one client where she's so tuned in to the timelines, his story, that I can regress her and bring her to a point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a board of historians <clears throat> and specific historians that know certain time frames. 
So say that we wanted to uh, tap into the Renaissance era. And we wanted to learn something specific that happened during the Renaissance. Now, historians know every goddamn thing. 1747, John Paul jumped off a building. So, I would have the historian tell me, John Paul, 1774, jumped off a building. I can then regress my client to that time point. To the exact point where John Paul about to jump off the goddamn building. And we can actually go backwards. Now, let's just... Rewind that a little bit and see what led up to that. Let's see if there's anything that's actually associated to that time frame. Maybe some hidden information no one knows about. We can access that. Now, I've already proved this theory. So what I did was I would basically uh, hide something in a home. And I would regress my client and I would have her project. Well, not her. Because basically I had my client have a friend hide something in her home. And then I would regress her and I would have her scan her home in this regressive state and she found the hidden item without anyone telling her while I regressed her so I knew that this has I did this a while ago I knew it had accurate or 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 meaning to it I was like oh wow like shit what if we could find like lost scrolls what if we could find like secret entrances you don't got that shit written in a history book. We got to actually go back in time to be able to experience those things or review those things. So I kind of have a way of making that happen. I've been creating that, developing that. So that's something I'm going to be doing soon. And another thing is with ghosts. So a lot of uh, areas, homes, things like that have like ghost energy in it or ghost presence in it. So I have another client that I can regress and that she kind of becomes the medium for these presences. And we can kind of summon forward or speak to whatever ghost energy resides within a space. And then I could potentially transition it out of that space. And uh, these are like the futuristic things I'm going to be doing. In addition to a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm just kind of giving you like a little insight. Like we have so many things in this little mind. Because I'm little. I'm little. So the mind can't be that big. Damn hat is small. So, so many ideas in this little mind. But on that note, I'm going to go enjoy my day. What is a ghost definition? It is a sperm that has been trapped. It is a sperm or spirit that has been trapped to their own past experiences. And there are... Um, where do they go? They go back inside of a body, you, that kind of uh, animate those past experiences. So, if... You was a slave 300 years ago. Well, guess what? You're going back in the body of a slave. Well, who is a slave? You a slave, slave to your job. Music artists are slaves. They're slaves to like music record labels. Shit, T-Mobile is your goddamn owner. You a slave to T-Mobile. So a slave it goes back inside the body of a slave. And now you have a ghost or a spirit inside of you that's kind of reacting or reliving those experiences. So uh, they go back in a body. And then they kind of project themselves out in your house. You're like, oh my God, my house is haunted. No, bitch, you're haunted. You're haunted. The house is not haunted. You're haunted. That is the reality of it. But, uh, yeah, you know, a ghost. It is a, I don't want Google's fucking definition of a ghost. Hell no. Not at all. It is a dead, so an, an apparition, apparition, an apparition, of a dead person which is believed to appear or become manifested to the living. See, how is a five-year-old going to understand that? Five-year-old, five-year-old. Quentin, what is a ghost? It is an apparition of a dead person which is believed to appear or become magnif uh, magnificent to the living. Or manifest the living. Some sh that's my point. Like, child ain't going to understand that. But what is a ghost? It is a dead person... That did not let their life go. It is a dead person that's still holding on. It is kind of like a altered carbon. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. I'm about to end this. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Whoever uh, Alpha, Yahoo, Tompkins, yeah, you out here, bro. Thank you for your interaction. Afterlife, particles, carbon, chemicals, flesh, illustration.
Good old Flash Gordon. I'm about to leave. Appreciate you guys for tuning in.